I have no idea. I'm, I'm still on the stream. <laughs> right. Can people actually see us now? It looks like they can. It's not lagging at all. Although I've got a fucking stupid beat from Discord every time I click my damn voice. Why is that happening? Oh, that's why. It turned streamer mode off. Right. Can people actually see us? There we go. We're, we're on screen. We're alive. We had to improvise last second because everything stopped working. So the complete format that yeah, we worked upon last night, getting all on TS and chatting, was for nothing. <laughs> we, we spent like an hour on Discord fixing this all up last night, and what do you know, as soon as we got tried to go live, it's just all fucking broken, isn't it? <laughs> it's fucking sad. <laughs> oh my god. Right, so, off the people that were in the chat have probably fucked off by this point, but hey-ho, we're, we're, we're alive and we're ready now. It so... <laughs> I guess I'll start us back off again. Obviously, you've already seen Peter's fucking flex in a in one FPS apparently. <laughs> one FPS. Yeah, it made the stream crash. How much of that actually is good? It literally killed the stream all the time. Just give, right, give him yeah. another one, mate. That's all. That's all you need to do. But anyways, we'll, we'll move on from Peter because no one gives a shit anyway. Yeah, exactly. uh, <laughs> we'll address the elephant in the room. Yes, we are all aware that Tarnet does look like a pre-recorded VHS tape. We are all aware. Look at it. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm actually live, but from the ages. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, 40 uh, years back in time, Tarnet is with us. <laughs> it's okay. I can I can just you know, like, know everything I'm going to do now and, and turn the, the NDBL send for the better. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> First thing I'm doing, I'm killing uh, Tavington for good, for real. A lot of good things happened from there. Don't forget, the, <laughs> don't forget the 91st meme video that we had. Oh yeah, no, that's true. Oh, yes. That's true. There we go. Now it's boy, 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 boy. Ah, uh, fucking boy, classic. Boy. <laughs> Absolute yeah, classic, isn't it? Right. I fucking love Nigrums for that. Even his posters are monochrome. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're gonna have a, a really funny, uh, funny like uh, comments to keep from the chat. Like I'm, trying, I'm gonna try to save some. Just gonna have a flick through it, uh, like 0.5 speed later, and just read all the insults in chat. I'd fuck Tardet. Don't tell him though. Oh, Rick, uh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, that was that was only. It's okay, Rick. I knew it already. Right, so let's go through and let's we'll, we'll, we'll do a little bit of a uh, we'll do a little bit of a test here, guys. Yeah, just because we're not sure if everything's working. Like, let's see. Does it lag now that we're in, we're on the big screen? It's not lagging. Not Try lagging. something else. What about if I do this scene? Will it lag? Oh yeah, it's lagging immediately. Stop oh, no. doing it. <laughs> you, I <don't, laughs> they're just gonna have to look at me while we're on the fucking big screen. Then I guess I don't think I'm gonna be able to get around it. Wait, it's only you that they see. Oh, no. at, at the moment, I'm just flicking through, just trying to see what actually works. Give me a, oh, give me a moment. Wait, <laughs> what? So it it does work when I go on this screen. It says it's quite laggy. Like if you guys say it's fine, just roll with it. No, no, honestly, I'm actually on it. It's it's actually fine. Oh. Really for Chris According to. OBS, it says that we're skipping 5% of all the frames. It's okay, just don't trust OBS. Nobody does anyway, so... Fair enough, I guess. Well, should we get started then? We're already like 30 minutes late anyway. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> if... <laughs> no, if this was a, norm a normal appointment for Tardis, this would be the regular starting time. 40 minutes, uh, 30 minutes of late. Fashion I'm, late. I'm, I'm actually late all the time in real life. Like, not even kidding. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just it's what it is, really. Uh, Righty, so uh, up on the screen, I don't know, I, I'm, sure, I'm assuming you guys have the stream open. So, I've got the um, uh, the EIC match list open at the moment for match week two. Oh, yeah. uh, I understand, guys, that the, uh, the text is a little bit blurry at the moment because obviously I had to turn the stream settings down because for some reason OBS hates me today. So, we'll, we'll, I'll fix that out for next week, though. But uh, hey ho, it is what it is. Well, the show must go on for now. So, why isn't 15th in the pink group? That's because nobody likes you, Russian, that's why. Yeah. So, we'll go over the matches, as per usual, and then we'll we'll go from there. So, 
First of all, first on the list, we had 25th versus the CR, the Connaught Rangers, the Turkish God Squad, the only Turkish God Squad. <laughs> the only yeah, Turkish yeah, God yeah, Squad yeah, remaining, yeah. but we haven't yeah. got to that part yet. <laughs> just doing it on the internet page. I'm, I've just tried that, but it's not letting me for some reason. It doesn't let me when I'm on this uh, screen because of the way it's captured, Ricker. So there's not a lot I can really do about that. We're going to have to just fucking deal with it, mate. We just get to okay, deal with it. Listen to us, and you will know everything you need to know. You don't need to read. Oh, wait a minute. Exactly. Oh, there you go. How does that look? That looks better. Right. We're zoomed, boys. We're zoomed. Right. So, yeah. Um, in terms of a 7 3 result for the Cornet Rangers, do you, do you like the. Was it unexpected? Expected for you guys? What do you think? No, not really. Uh, I was the referee of the match. Uh, and I had also done like a quick, uh, quick recording on that, and I have to say it was really just uh, one of the quicker pace type of one v ones. The attendance was on the lower hand side for for the 25th, which kind of hampered their performance in the first half. But they actually, uh, which I was quite astonished by uh, in the first half, they actually managed to beat the CR uh, quite well evenly in the melee. I have to say, and managed to take one round back then. So you know, overall, it was a pretty exciting first half. But the second half was just very dominant from the CR. Uh, so, but again, I expected Dust uh, and his regiment to win that one simply because they have been playing so long already together. Yeah, fair enough. I agree with that as well. What about you, Todd? Yeah, I think uh, I was more surprised by the results uh, they had against, uh, I think, the Greek regiment laid by. Um, I don't Alec know. Yeah, Alec yeah, Alec yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. and, like, that one was a, was a shock out to me because uh, I, was, I was expecting the, the CR to take it. Not easily, but clearly like with an advantage, and the draw was surprising. But this one is probably more in the range of what we expect. Uh, like Sierra is a competitive regiment; they are doing complete training. They are training against better regiment to improve. Whereas the twenty fifth, I don't really know them. Uh, like all the information I got was from was from you, um, Chrissy. Uh, so yeah. Uh, I mean, taking three rounds out of a Sierra is probably not a, a small achievement for them. But uh, the order of uh, of um, like, no, like the Yash is, uh, is maintained. The CR was better on the one. Yeah, no, I agree. And uh, bringing us on to the 16th as well, uh, led by Leko, they managed to pull out a 5 5 draw against the 3 PP, which I was expecting um, it to be closer than most people would think, to be honest, judging by, like their like you said, their first result. But a 5 5 draw, I thought, was quite surprising, to be honest. I think when you consider how long the 3 PP have been kicking around for. Um, I, I was to be honest, I was expecting it to be like maybe a seven three, maybe a six four, something like that. Uh, in so favor that was, of the three PP. In favor of the three PP, yeah, was what was okay. what I was expecting before. Before, well, maybe before last week. Um, exactly. Yeah, to be honest, yeah. because because obviously it's clear that they're, they're 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 here and they're ready to upset anyone at the moment. So yeah. Because you have to remember that last week the three PP took two runs out of a uh, fifteen hour, and it's no again it's no no small feat that they managed to take like two runs to the arguably best regiment of NW. So yeah. at least at least the best regiment at the moment uh, for sure. So yeah, it's just uh, it wasn't wasn't really a bad match for them. And uh, coming against the the Greeks, it's really like yeah again it's a good result for the sixteenth. Uh, and probably a good result for the 3PP as well. Like, at least they, they share points. There's no really uh, any loser. They get one point each, and uh, they can move on to next week combat. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I don't. I didn't really have the 3PP as my favorite uh, for that match, uh, especially seeing uh, the 16th had gone international. Uh, actually, some months uh, uh, prior to the Fire UK Fly. Cup match one, starting, two, three, so they actually are not four. really solely relying anymore on Greek players, which are. Sometimes far a few to uh, find in this community, but they're now a bit more of an international type of regiment. And okay. we had faced them several times uh, with the number three company in a 1v1, the 16th. And, you know, so they basically have been trying a lot with 1v1s, group fighting matches and stuff like that. So I was technically seeing how they performed against us and how they, you know, done a lot of training over the time. Compared to the 3PP, because we shouldn't under, uh, like forget that 3PP is an on and off type of regiment. You know, sometimes they're really active in the NW community, and sometimes they kind of disappear from the scenery. And I feel like that kind of plays into the hands of the 16 practicing a lot and not going away from the community. Uh, and the 3PP yeah, then having kind of a, like an uphill fight against the regiments, which does know how to play really well together. Uh, so I personally ha would have had the 16 over the 3PP. But I suppose because of the veterancy of the 3PP, having the same leadership pretty much over all these years, uh, brought them towards, you know, the 5-5 draw, which I think is a fair result. Yeah, for sure. 
<laughs> alright Bobby yeah no fair enough I, can, I agree with all of that to be honest and uh yeah, we'll move on to uh, 15th versus 96Y. Obviously, I'll comment on this just because I was playing in it. Well, I, I played about half of it. And in that half, I maybe got to melee once. No, I got to melee <laughs> twice. And one yeah, of those times, I team-killed Matty and then got team-killed. Ah, oh, the, the joy. The joy of a 1v1A. Eh? <laughs> I still won the rounds, though. I did win the rounds, actually. That is very true. But, um, <laughs> yeah, no, th when it comes to that match, to be honest, I think the... Uh, the 96Y had us pretty much outclassed at any round we tried to shoot them in. We only tried to shoot them maybe twice. <laughs> Matt is in chat. Yeah, we only tried to shoot them like twice, and both times it went absolutely horrible for us. We ended up like 15 to 1 <laughs> in like Men Alive, and G's the only one alive. I think it happened like twice maybe. Um, yeah, but when it came to the melee, it was actually a lot more even than I would have thought it would have been, to be honest. Um, I think the 96Y excel at just dragging melee out and make, and just waiting for you to make mistakes. I think that's kind of what they excel at. And uh, yeah, no, they managed to pull a couple of rounds um, away from us because of it. So fair play to them, to be honest. I think um, I'll be interested to see how they perform against like the 16th, for example, and how that goes. Because I think if, um, if they allow the 16th to shoot a lot, I, I reckon it could be quite an even 1v1, to be honest. Yeah. Do you um do you know if uh, against you they still had this um like this pretty much uh, really unique playstyle if I, if I can call it that way of just literally like running away from the melee every time? Because uh like last time I faced them um uh, it was like they played like that but I haven't been playing against them in one one for a really long time so I don't know if they really abuse it to that extent because uh, it's a legit technique like don't get me wrong like it's if you can just like run away and drive three people and they are dumb enough to follow you it's it's your it's your own for really um but yeah i'm just like how did because i didn't watch the perspective you put up i only watched part of the match so i'm not really sure how it goes yeah when uh, to be honest with you they didn't do much of that in our uh 1v1 to be honest um they were they were pretty much in our face the whole time they they had they did actually have a hill to sit in its spawn I think pretty much all of us thought they would use it to some degree, but no, they, they came straight at us, to be honest. Um, which, uh, especially from when I was leading the 18 else, that's pretty uncharacteristic of them. They, they, they usually try to use any advantage they can find. Um, so yeah, no, it was a pretty good 1v1, I can't really complain, to be honest. Yeah. I have to say as well, like I, I think 96Y is now a little bit more comfortable with the lineup they are fielding, uh, especially in the European Ifty Cup. You know, you see players like the Sands and Mother Chick, you know, like these guys are good players uh, for the 96Y and they don't play with a big lineup, you know, so they can really rely on the competitive lineup uh, which fights together in the uh, NWWC, in the Russian, Ukrainian or just the Eastern uh, type of nations. Uh, and also just uh, they're fielding like sometimes between 15 and 20. And these guys have been playing pretty much uh, together as well for the longest time. So I just feel like they're a lot more comfortable now. Than what they were uh, prior to uh, Stop the Stop commenting on my match. bed, it is so made. I think they uh, feel like they it can just made. play a little bit more aggressively. Uh, it and it works really like well in, uh, into their hands, you know. Like, they do the same thing that most regiments try to do in these smaller type 1v1s. Hold the line, try to shoot two shots, move again. You know, try to go on each other's uh, tails of the lines. Trying to get these kills in whilst the other ones can't get the kills. And yeah, that's what you really saw as well in the match against you of the 15th war, of what I've rewatched it at least. No, fair enough. And uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll sort of skip along a little bit now. Um, we'll, we'll skip over 92nd versus IVE, just because, to yeah. be honest, uh, no Toxic to 45e is kind of an expected result, to be honest. Um, yeah. they put, I have to say, they won two melee rounds. Really, that was oh, well enough. played from their sides. Like, it, you, you can't underestimate 45e again. Like, these guys have been consistent. And that's the only thing I will say. They will remain a consistent factor within this NW community and will continue to uh, do Definitely. Uh, well. A pretty good job. Yeah, definitely. No, for sure. Yeah, not really much to add. And um, when it comes to, let's have a look through the rest of the results as well. We had a uh, 19th versus 77Y. Uh, that was a 8-2 to the 77Y. I have to say, I think I kind of expected a result similar to that, maybe a 7-3 instead. Because um, when it comes down to leadership, the 77 why have, have you beat there but no, not by sure. a mile right considering just how tenured they are and Gaz has been, they, Gaz has been at it for fucking years 
the last the last seven free against the 44 which uh i believe is still you know, like not better than the 77 wise so right. it, it kind of makes sense to like have uh, such a result even though it might be a bit harsh on the 19 because i know they've been trying really hard like even before you this fall that came came in but especially since he came back uh with them uh he has been like, really trying hard to get like that competitive uh, side even stronger but Overall, you know, like Gaz is, is one of the most experienced leaders we have in the scene, and uh, he, can, he can really work his magic uh, easily against an opponent such as the 19. So, yeah. very surprising result. Turun is still not too bad considering the 77 Y will be one of the play regiment I expect to go to the playoffs. So, yeah, yeah. Definitely. definitely. And and 77Y again is fielding players like Kex and Ricky Maru, who don't really often touch on two and W really other than for the 77 Y and these type of competitive matches. And you know those type of players really. Uh, you know, carry in terms of the melee for the Samson Y when they get in that uh, position, because Gas usually gets his line, even if not in an advantage, uh, into a melee against any type of regiment he faced. Yeah, there you go. That's, that just shows experience there. Uh, a proven leader like Gas, you know, and uh, we'll, we'll come on to uh, the uh, match that they played against the unproven leader known as Maskman yeah. today. You know, yeah. we'll, we'll jump onto that. It was a five-five draw between yeah. the 45th and the uh, 30, uh, 13e today. Oh, no, wait. That was the, <laughs> Wrong that match! Was the God wrong damn match. it. I'm, my, my memory's all God. over the place. No, uh, 13e played against um, 71st today. We'll get to that in a second. I meant to say 45th played against the 77y. That's what I meant to say. But, um, yeah. yeah, no. The, the proven leader played against the unproven leader. And I think um, where... Uh, the 77 Y. Looking back at the VOD, I mean, it was only a couple of hours ago, but I did have a flick through of the uh, VOD of the uh, casting that Glenn and um, Headless did, and yeah, it looked like they, the Gaz just had them sort of beat out um, when it came to positioning a lot of the time and uh, just getting in early shots where they can and everything else. And uh, Mossman just didn't really have an answer for it. But it was a pretty good match, though. Uh, you don't see 30 v 30s very often anymore. So. No, definitely not. Yeah, the, the only thing I can really say about it is like, you know, I, I have to give props where props is due, you know, because Marsman did really play uh, the same type of, uh, well, match as Gas was playing, you know, the fire maneuver, getting the better angles on each other and trying to shoot each other in the backs of the line or where the clumps are coming out. And I feel like that's where the 45th end uh, suffered at the most is where they done the reverse columns and their line start clumping in the middle and the Samson Y instantly, you know, snapped on it hold the line, first to shoot in there, and one or two kills would occur. And, you know, it, the 45th end would then also hold and shoot in where the 77 y is stationary. But then as soon as those shots were fired, the 77 y line was usually on the move. So then it would be like a trade for like two or three kills for the 77 y to one kill for the 45th end. And if that continues long enough throughout the match, 77 y is going to end up with uh, the upper hand. But I do have to say that Marsman really tried to utilize the map to the best of his ability uh, along with Mitchell. Uh, and sometimes just really got unlucky because, you know, uh, yeah. they they held on the ridge where the 45th had brilliant cover, but they just didn't hit any shot. And the Samson Y hit every shot. That was just insane. Me and Unicorn, we were both astonished at how amazing, what a type of impact that volley had from the Samson Y when the 45th had the angle. But yeah, it's just, you know, um, it was a brilliant fucking match on that point. Yeah, I saw um, when I was looking through, there were a couple of rounds, um, for example, one on the second half when me and G were watching together. Um, there was a, well, the 45th had a really nice head glitching position and the 77Y had to sort of advance up and then sort of, well, advance up to the level ground and then try and get some shots at them. But even then, like, they were they still at a disadvantage because they were being head glitched on. Yeah. But then 77Y out of nowhere just volleyed nine people yeah. whilst getting head glitched against. That is fucking <laughs> mental. And you, you almost <laughs> never see that. So, like, by the looks of it, the 45th got pretty unlucky. I think um, yeah. uh, had it, one or two volleys changed, that could have been a 6 4 7 3 to the 45th pretty easily, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, one thing which, was, which is worth mentioning is that, you know, like, we have been seeing the. Um, uh, 45th and Massman being quite active in the like late, late last year of NW, but when you compare it to like a leader like Gas, who has been pretty much leading since forever, uh, you have to you know, like remember that uh, in terms of purely leading, and you know how important it is in a 1v1, um, Gas should have been beat any day. 
uh, which which proves two things is that the votive vot, votive lineup uh, has a quality on this one, and like it's it's something which shouldn't be an, an underestimated compare, uh, considering like how many top players they lost due to the uh, uh, um, um forming. And yet again, you know, like again, if you look at the other side, it's just that a leader like Gaz is so impactful. But you know, even with not the best lineup, because I, I mean no disrespect to the 78, but they have you know, like a lineup which doesn't necessarily like threaten you. But when you have, when you put Gaz who know them perfectly and they know perfect gas perfectly, uh it's just like it's such a it's probably such a good combination that it can literally take on the best regimen of uh, of NW. Yeah, Maybe the top, 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 top of the scene, but definitely a lot of uh, of really good regimen. Yeah, but that's the thing, you know, some some why if you look at the player, what they have, yeah, sometimes they go a little bit inactive, but always when the important tournaments come around, people turn a lot more active uh, and they will attend those events because now it's really a combined effort where before it was always the some some line uh, before that and maybe like a CEO like Charlie the Turtle uh, of the artillery joining in their competitive lineup. But now it really is just a combined effort from the lights, the line and everything like that. But they all know what's going on. They have been under the same command for such a long time. And yeah, it just really plays into the strength of just knowing what they're doing. Yeah, pretty much. Agree with all of that. And uh, yeah, well, I want to go on to a. Um, I want to say I'm going to do it here. See, I've still got it open. Yeah, I want to go on to a result which did kind of surprise me, to be honest. I thought it might be a little bit closer. Um, was 71st versus NL13. Now, at first glance, you'd think obviously the 71st um, is a, a lot more tenured, um, and their, their leaders have a lot more experience, I'd say, in a, a 1v1 tournament like this with on such a large scale. But at the same time, playing against the NL13 and everything, they're they're pretty cool. They're pretty decent, to be honest. They've got a really good, um, yeah. they've got a really good average of melee um, across the their joke. regiment, and they've got some pretty some pretty cool tactics as well that they tend to bring out. Like you don't yeah. just, like when do you ever see regiments do the reform on center and stuff like that anymore? Like the only regiments I ever remember doing that were like you know the sixty guard and whatnot led by Dasprot back in the day. They were yeah. the only regiments that ever did it. So pretty cool to see. A regiment like that uh, carry on, to be honest. Yeah, uh, yeah definitely. Tactics. I, I, I thought it was going to be a little bit more even. I was thinking maybe it might be like a 6 4, maybe a 7 3, but an 8 2 is a bit, a bit bigger for a blowout than I was expecting, but fair enough. 71st was just dominant on that day, I suppose. Yeah, I think I think that's still like um, uh, um, in terms of pretty competitive uh, um, environment, they're just like much better regiments. Like... But as you say, like when that when that part in has a has a lot of argument to uh, to go with when when they face them. But uh, I think if you just like make them like play ten time out ten time, uh, the um, the uh, seventy fours come out uh, out on top like pretty much every time. And sometimes like it would be close off for the uh, nf fourteen. They might get more room. Like a six four wouldn't have been surprising at all. Um, but the seventy fours has it's not like they they are a regiment which formed recently. Uh, but the core of that team is is literally like so freaking old, like yeah. you know, like the likes of Romel, um, uh, you know, like all the seventy second uh, um, uh, Phoenix, Dark uh, Templar, uh, Exactly. Yeah. They they know they know each other by heart. It's, it's pretty much like uh, I don't I think they are one of the oldest group of uh, competitive player still uh, active in the scene and still playing together. And and honestly, like I think anyone who has been playing matchmaking. Uh, has come against a uh, vast stack of players, but literally, like, they just like turn with like eight players from the 71st. Uh, they're gonna be like Phoenix, Kazaza, or Romel, and then you're gonna have like the likes of you know, like some new player like Donkey King or other player like that. We're not really as um, known as, as other, but they actually really train hard, and uh, overall, it makes a difference against the regiment on like the NL 14, where also they know each other really well, uh, but I don't think they put the same effort into really becoming like a, a top regiment. There are more of this kind of regiment when I play the competition and try to do well in them, uh, but it won't matter uh, as much as it would for the 71st, I feel like. Yeah, I feel like 71st is like uh, very much known. This is immediately like uh, a, a, a do or die move, as I would like to put it. Uh, basically, you know, like as I want to put it, 
the 71st know that how important the European Infantry Cup is uh, to them and their core of players because, you know, winning gives you such, you know, a boost of morale and could probably bring in more recruits, you know, because then they can make a statement like, you know, we're on the level of the NR12, you know, who won competitive leagues against other international regiments. Uh, mm -hmm. And I feel like th where's the NR13? And the 13 is like a steady, upgoing, uh, competitive regiment. They're taking the time, they're improving with what they have. They stick to very much the same of the core, uh, but they do it in a different way. Where 71st uh, will go out of their way to play a lot of matchmaking and stuff like that. I still feel like NR13 players do that as well, but they do it in a different, they do it in a different way. They take more time with it, and you, th their results will probably grasp uh, later on, you know. In a, in maybe in a different tournament, maybe still in this tournament, because, you know, their leadership, as Chris has said as well, like, they have some really cool formations they can pull off. But, yeah, in, in the match against the 71st, for example, it really is just, um, you know, the overwhelming melee strength that the 71st probably uh, had in that match would probably resulted in them being more competent, even being at the disadvantage of, like, manpower uh, in during that match. They will still be able to win a melee, you know? Being down by three for them, and if you have players like Gerha, Ubuntu Eagle, or Destiny, Dark Templar himself, you know, they can pretty much mm. get those skills probably back against some people who are a bit on the average level of uh, an NW player. I'm telling you. I agree. There's one last match from match week two to go over. But we'll leave that for now, just because that will take some time. Uh, <laughs> I already have. I yeah, already have an idea what that's going to be. Oh, I wonder what match that's going to be oh, about. Oh, come on. <laughs> but we'll, we'll segue while talking about the uh, 71st to talk about the match that um, you guys played against them today, Tardet. Uh, mm -hmm. And also... Uh, oh, I haven't put it in the uh, in the thing yet, but it was, a, it was an 8-2, wasn't it, to the 13E? And it was a... Hey, well, it was yeah. 8-2, right? It was pretty much 25 versus 25 the whole time. Uh, so it pretty was, nice it was, size, one more. Yeah, it was, it was 26 for all time, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. And uh, to be honest with you, uh, when me and G were cosmic, we were very surprised by the scoreline. I think um, we well, when you uh, well, I'll be uploading the recording of this probably uh, in the morning tomorrow, and everyone will be able to see the commentary and everything else where we. You know, we point out the good things that the regiments do, and then obviously the bad things as well. And I think, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, um, I think when it comes to like the sort of bad decisions, uh, I think there were a lot of decisions both regiments made that were quite questionable um, for such a large one v one like that. But the mm -hmm. issue, uh, but the issue was, was that the thirteen E was punishing the seventy first way more for them, and it was, and obviously it was a complete contrast because it was an eight two in the end. And uh, it did come down to quite a few even melees. I think the um, I think one of those rounds that the 13 e lost, for example, um, I think was it the first or the second round? I don't quite remember. Uh, but you had you had the uh, you had that hill, uh, and uh, instead of holding the hill, you guys went to run down, noticed your mistake, went to run back up again, and you all split in two. And that's the only reason why you lost that round is because mm -hmm. um, of, of what looked like miscommunication, to be honest. So it, it could have just been a 9-1 that easily. <laughs> so I, I feel, what do you think, Tony? What do you have to say about the match, considering you were the one there playing for the 13 for the winning side? Um, I think the, the statement of um, like both regiments did mistake is, is quite um, um, fair and, and not a surprise in any regard because like um, both leadership, also in like Dark Templar, his experience as a leader and on our side, Dash has been uh, leading uh, the 85B in some one one compared to the likes of yourself, Peter, um, G, and, and many of our uh, regimental leaders, uh, they are still new to uh, to a lot of stuff. And you can, it's showing in the leading. Um, and, and, and I think by looking at, at the point of view, we, we put, we actually give a lot of stuff to open and to work on, but it's part of a, you know, part of a deal. We want to show that we are doing well, so we put a perspective, but if you look at it, there is some stuff we are just going wrong and we're working hard to fix it. Um, what, what made the difference for me tonight was pretty much that, as you say, you know, like we had a, we had a way to punish the uh, 71st in shooting, especially uh, in a lot of room. And that's something I think not a lot of us, not, we, I mean, we won't be able to rely on it in every one one especially not against some like really top regiments uh, of the scene if we are, are due to face them. But there was a, um, an atmosphere, uh, a synergy tonight that was really not seen before. And um, it was pretty much the best day for the 14 to, to come together. 
uh, before, before Tini and for Tiboni as well, because uh, they're obviously like uh, uh, other part of the coalition, so they deserve the same respect as, as we as we have been given. But um, it was just like pretty much like the whole team coming together, uh, being excellent in shooting, discipline, and 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 really obviously, but by one you would, by party would expect it, uh, but really made us win the match. Yeah, I think it's only fair, but you also shouldn't underestimate, you know, like uh, what a lot of people tend to forget, like, of course, it all comes down to when you get into the melee, where you get a good ankle to shoot, it all comes down to your members, uh, your uh, your line, uh, your rankers, as I should say, it. Uh, they need to perform as well. They need to hit the shots, they need to work together in melee, they need to have good communication, but it's also a lot of stress is being put on the leader. Uh, you know, like a leader, if he makes a wrong mistake, you know, uh, it could be detrimental for the result. And that's something that will always play in the background of somebody, uh, you know, who recently came back to the scene. Because as far as I know, with Dash, uh, he wasn't really around prior to the 13E uh, reforming. Uh, or at least I haven't seen uh, him play in any regiments. So I feel like, you know, it could also just be still the energy that you have as like, you're getting back into the game. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a very important match on your hands and you know these guys are good. Uh, and you, just with the adrenaline and everything that's going on, you, you're sometimes going to make a decision where you afterwards, like, man, did I fuck up there, you know, like, mm. you'll, see, you'll see it with anyone, really, in this game. Yeah, no, exactly, and as I said, like, Dash led the, the 85B, but we didn't play that much when we once, like, I think out of the two edition of the 85B we had, we probably like, played, like, maximum of five, six, one, uh, one, one. And when we had a chance to um, to sign up for an actual like one one competition, we just won't just before. So it's just like we we were all we will always be more familiar with um, with a uh, group fighting kind of things for already pretty much type of fighting. Um, but what what was important is just like to actually make sure that we can improve in both aspects as a as a regimental uh, group in, in the regimental aspect of things and also in the one v one, which is. Honestly, like when you get when you play a good when we run, it's so much rewarding because there's so much stuff to take into account. It's just like positioning, shooting, melee, leadership, uh, cohesion, and stuff. It's it's, it's a fucking um, amazing, you know, like um, experience. And uh, and and when everything goes right, it's just like you you, you you can feel you are untouchable. And tonight, I think that's what happened with us. Uh, we were untouchable. Won't be like that every a day, and we'll have to walk, as you said, on this mistake we did because. Uh, our regiment will punish them. We punish us on on that. Um, but for for tonight, we're just gonna you know, like be happy with a win uh, and and just like enjoy it for the moment because it's just it's an it's an amazing result. No no matter which way you look at it. Definitely. And uh, yeah, no, it was a good match overall. Though to be honest, um, wasn't any rule breaks or anything really to speak of. Uh, only had to do a couple of slays. You know, and it just happens. It's just a part of one v ones. Uh, those little mistakes do just happen that when there's 50 people on a server all playing against each other um and yeah well we'll leave it at that then i think there's not much else really more to be said I'll, but i will leave it with um when it comes to the 85e and 1v1s like you said there you guys may not have done that many of them uh, in the past with the previous iterations with them um but uh, i remember actually one of my favorite 1v1s we'd done in probably like a good two or three years to be honest with the 18e was actually versus the 85e I think I am, um, yeah, no, I do have a video of that actually up on my YouTube channel. And it was a really great 1v1, like no bullshit, didn't even have to, like nobody had to get slayed at any point in that 1v1. And it was just a lot, of, it was just a good bit of fun, to be honest, which you, which you just didn't have for a long time at the time, because mostly it was camping Turkish people or, <laughs> or, or people that just refused to play you. So it was a bit, I was just a bit uh, unfortunate, to be honest. We... We were never dominant uh, in in one v one, but we were always fun to play. Cause like we, it's it's really like it's a French mentality of like you go to the fight and I think you know like um, people can call us on like tryouts, uh, you know, like that we sweet and that we really give like uh, too much shit about the game. But at the end of the day, you know like we are people who really like we want to uh, have a good fight and give our opponent a good fight. At least this group of French in particular. And uh, and we'll do like you will never see us camping a fucking ill for ages. Like that's not that's not in our DNA. Like our DNA is just like you know, like get into melee, shoot, uh, or, or shoot and get into melee and just like fucking fight. <coughs> like go at it. Yeah, yeah. It's only a shame that that like after the RGLs, uh, the second RGL season that came about uh, with the 85 e uh, I believe like soon after that, there was actually um, 
another, and I believe, I, I don't, I'm not sure if it was an NWL or another mm. one of you one league. Yeah, yeah, we just disbanded just before that. And yeah, yeah, yeah no, no. Uh, it was just unfortunate. Like, but honestly, I don't think we would have done as it has in VHL. Uh, uh, so know, maybe people know, were expecting you know, like that it was going to be harder. Uh, but you know, no, I, I touched on that and, and definitely could have been fun to play, just didn't happen. You know, like, and now we at least we have a chance for opportunity to, uh, to you know, like, uh, um, have a regiment that can play one v one competition for yeah. uh, the longest time possible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah, and I've seen some people in chat talking about the 2LR, so why don't we transition over to this week's segment of the Ban Watch. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking Let's dumb, go. isn't it? It's so dumb, but it just works. Oh, man. But, uh, right, let's uh, move this over to the other screen so everyone can see it. So, for those of you, oh, I'm gonna have to zoom in again, aren't I? Right, uh, where is the zoom button? Right, hopefully that's good enough. It's, if it's not good enough, well, just fucking tough to do. You're gonna have to deal with it, I guess. Um, yeah, 18th versus 55th. So, uh, I'll be making a couple of comments uh, about this and a couple of announcements regarding this as well. So, as everyone's seen on FSC. We did have to remove the 18th from EIC due to the fact that they, on multiple weeks, been breaking multiple rules, and even after breaking those rules, seemingly just didn't really give a shit and just kept breaking them again afterwards anyway. And then, uh, and then it's it's one thing like breaking rules, and then it's another thing playing the ignorant card afterwards and pretend oh, I just didn't know that was in the rules. It's like well, you're supposed to read them when you join the tournament. It's not my problem. At the end Pretty of the much. day. <laughs> so yes the rules that the 18th had broken are essentially well on the first match week when they played against the 45e we let them off with a warning because three players on their ro well that were playing for them weren't on their roster now uh, those three players as punishment were banned from the next match week uh, like you know, they have to get some sort of punishment for breaking the rules and that that's a like a fairly reasonable slap on the wrist, I'd say, rather than just taking their win away from them. Um, however, one of those three players played in this match against the 55th, and uh, Yusuf's excuse of he didn't know that they were banned was bullshit, because the other two players I banned were in spectator watching, and didn't play a single round, even though they were actually on... they had less numbers than the 55th, so... You know, weigh up how you will. You know, that I see that as just people lying to me and trying to bullshit to me, right? So that's the situation with that, and it's all up on the FFC thread, the roster, like who broke the roster rules, and uh, and why the punishment that's been given was given. And now on top of that, you had the um, the all chat. So Peter, uh, you were obviously there. Uh, you yeah. know that the all, all chat rule had to be invoked, which basically means that unless you're an officer, you can't speak in all chat. Um, and it doesn't need to be agreed upon by both regiments. If the 55th said that they wanted the all chat taken out, then it gets taken out. If the 18th said it, then it would have been taken out as well. You know, regardless, that's just the way it works, and that's the way the rules have worked since season one. Right, Pete and you remember, because you made EIC with me. So you, so you remember like the basic premise. We just wanted like an alternative to NWL that was going to be the most enjoyable, right? And a rule Pretty like much, this, yeah. yeah, and a rule like this, not like gives that because there are some regiments like, for example, you did have like Dan the Man's regiment and whatnot that would always complain when you shit talked in all chat. So it, it, it always catered to regiments that with a different play style. Yeah. Now we got a couple of problems. Um, which has sparked quite a bit of controversy and quite a bit of uh, shit talk on the forums and uh, also sparked a meeting with the 55th and the admin team which Tardet was a part of um, on TeamSpeak, was it yesterday or the day before? It was yesterday, wasn't it? Um, yeah, so essentially um, the 18th had been camping the whole first half and uh, I can understand why that would frustrate the 55th and I can understand why that would frustrate the admins as well. Um, but the issue we have, well, I'll also add on to what I was just saying before, that by almost an hour into the 1v1, the side swap had not even happened yet. Which kind of just shows you how long that was actually going on for, right? Uh, how long that first half was going on for and how much camping was actually going on. 
Um, yeah. 71st, 71st laughing in superior German hour. <laughs> they took one hour with it one took round. One hour with <laughs> one round. That's all right. It wasn't the 71st, Peter. It was the 72nd. No. Yeah. Oh yeah. Shit. Re. <laughs> no, but um. Yeah. So there are a couple of issues, and to be honest with you, uh, this, uh, this issue, I don't so much blame the 18th for as much as other people do. In the so what happened was the 18th obviously didn't quite understand the uh, the hill camping rule. Now the hill camping rule is quite obvious um, for those that speak good English, uh, which notoriously the, the, the Turkish community don't have the greatest of English. Um, so I wouldn't really hold that to them. That's just how it is. It's always been. It's just how it always is, to be honest. Regardless of if it's, a, if it's an NW Turkish community, you go play CS. The Turkish community are exactly the same. Just like it basically anywhere. Now, um, the issue was, was instead of closing the distance with the 55th and getting in close range shooting or engaging in melee, instead of that, they just ran around the hill in a circle, went back up again. And then they obviously had to be told that that's not how it works. Now, I think everyone was quite stressed out because it had been over an hour and 20 minutes at that point because this was on the seventh round. But the referee who was Unicorn uh, made a mistake quite a large mistake to be honest with you and that mistake was that in the frustration and the fact that the uh, 18th didn't understand the rule and they weren't listening um because the hawk was obviously they didn't understand it and they don't speak great english they uh unicorn essentially gave the 55th round now there are a few problems with this which i'm going to get into um first of all we can't ever 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 under any circumstance be giving out rounds to regiments uh the problem is is it's hard to stay impartial and unbiased if you're doing that and there's nothing in the rules that said that that should have been done anyway and if if people were unsure then they should have came and spoken to me and yeah uh, we had a lengthy conversation about this on team speak um with Rala and the others from the 55th didn't we tell that and then your your opinion on the matter differed to mine i think you you sided more with them and their viewpoint uh, than mine because the issue is because this isn't in the rules and it never should have happened i did have to well, i did take the round away from the 55th and made it essentially a 5-5 draw uh to the 18th uh, which you know nobody likes getting rounds taken away from them and obviously it's it, it created an argument and i want to sort of jump onto you peter and what, what's your opinion on this because uh, we'll get to tardex in a minute because i already know what it is it's... yeah exactly you don't want to hear the devil advocate uh, talking <laughs> no, but, uh, <laughs> no in, in regards to that you know uh it's a hard call to make uh, especially when there were no like um uh, now afterwards you're gonna see like um that your rules lack certain explanation like what to do if a situation like this happens what does the referee have to do because uh, i felt like it was quite easily said that at that point match should have been cancelled you know and you know fair enough but it was uh, just to say on unicorn side i in, in my opinion if i was the referee at that point i would have just started ticking the slay button and uh, slay every 18th member if they didn't start moving out every second or so uh, so that would have been probably also a you know, detrimental to their result and probably losing that round if they didn't understand it. But to like take away the point uh, from the 55th, uh, you know, to some extent, yeah, you gotta draw uh, a fine line over there. Uh, with uh, you know, they got the win technically out of something that the referee shouldn't have done, but at the same time, there was no real clear uh, thing uh, or guideline how to act in such a situation. So, you know, th th there's something to be said about both sides. And here's, you know, where I'm going to be very Dutch and be in the middle of it. For both sides, there's something to be said upon. Um, you know, mistakes were made. Uh, the problems uh, uh, were faced and reviewed by a huge admin team, you know, from yours to GI to all the referees involved and stuff like that. And, yeah, then you eventually have to make a decision. Whether you like it or not, you got to take it. Yeah, that's that's just final. It's it's not your tournament, so sadly you can't influence it more than anything else. Yeah, the point um, me and GI uh, made, uh, well, we made a couple of points really. Um, at that point, the the match should have just been called off. It should have just been cancelled. If the 18th really weren't following the rules and everything, then like what's to say if they would have followed it for the rest of the one v one, right? It should have just been cancelled and called off at that point. Now, obviously, that doesn't mean a lot to the uh, to the 55th, because obviously they played through the rest of the 1v1, 
But that round itself didn't actually happen, which is where the problem lies at the end of the day. Um, because there's only 10 rounds in a 1v1 in EIC at the very least. And giving one round away is quite big, especially when you consider that one round ended up giving them the win overall, right? It ended up being 6-4 instead of what could have possibly been a 5-5. We don't know because we never played the round, right? Exactly. So, uh, yeah, and at the end of the day, but we 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 have we understood that by taking the round away, the uh, it screws both sides over in some way. Obviously, the 18th has been removed from EIC, so that also sparks another can of worms because we've brought the two LR in to replace them. So the issue they have there is obviously now the 55th have the option to replay the match, uh, which is and the fairest thing to do. Yeah, and Tarde, we'll, we'll come to you now because you, you had a, a differing opinion uh, to me and GI. You, you sided on the other side. So why don't you take <clears> us away? Well, I mean, I, I know I'm a minority in uh, in the one in team when it comes to the decision, but should have been taken or but I don't know if like it's not official. We haven't officially taken a decision on, on this match, right? I think we are still waiting for, uh, for uh, the final. Yeah, no, the decision has been made. I'm going to say what that is in a minute. Okay, all right. So, um, yeah, just to touch on a, on a few points, um, I I kind of agree with what Peter said in terms of like uh, both regiments having a, a bad share of responsibility about the whole decision, but um, it, it's not close to uh, the same extent. And I think it has to matter in some some way because um, yes, there was some frustration on the fifteen end, um, and and yeah, they actually, uh, especially after the match, may have taken some. Uh, not bad decision, but may have you know, like shown their frustration a little too much. But when it comes to the match itself, like other than just you know, like um, calling um, camping toxic because it is a tactic, and if you are signing up to a one v one, you know like a one v one competition, uh, you have to be ready for that. Yeah, it's shitty, but it's part of the whole thing, and uh, every regimental leader should understand that there is a way to counter that. Uh, camping itself is not you know, like a it's not gonna make you lose a match, um, but you have to be smart around it. And if you let your people uh, uh, like um, be frustrated, if you don't manage to control them, and tell them, okay, it's part of the thing. We may have we may have a one shitty match out in like five matches, uh, but we're, not, we're gonna get through this together. Then uh, yeah, it's just like it's part of the whole thing, and uh, and and that should be remember not only for the 55th but for all the in like new regiment will have a good core of player, uh, but we might have people who are still. An experience to uh, the world and like competitive thing, uh, right? It's it's part of, of what NW is, and it's why uh, some one one has been especially frustrating. Uh, it's like that. There's no way to really fight it. We have rules to counter uh, some to an extent, but if you don't let the rule come in in place, then uh, yeah, you have to. Uh, and and again, Uni um, did the best of what he could do. He's still a, a young referee. I think you mentioned that. Um, he, he may he may may have made some mistake. Fair enough. Um, I, I mean, he did he made a mistake, but uh, again, uh, he said that you know, like um, uh, 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 basically giving a run to a regiment should never happen. It should never happen again. But like conceding a match is also like a really strong decision. And I think that the the thing to do should have been calling one of you, uh, either you, G, uh, you or any other you know, like moderator, and telling them like now it's getting out of end, uh, and and I want someone who can actually have a, a valid decision to to just you know, like take uh, take over from. I don't know if you guys were available when it happened, uh, but that's also a reminder for us. I mean to re to remind all referee that you know like they can cut on us, and if at some point they just don't know what you know, what to do anymore, rather than take a shitty decision that's gonna affect a lot of people uh, we are half of them and if it's not you Chrissy it could be Peter could be me could be she could be anyone who actually know uh, enough to take a decision and actually uh, like not have uh, a lot of consequences uh, from it but on the 55th aspect it's just like actually one thing which has really been kept you know, like uh, away from the whole discussion was the fact that um, the the 18 play with three player they shouldn't have played with. And I, I tried to look at other matches or how they do it on native, for example. Um, and, and one thing which is like worth mentioning is that, yeah, for example, like I think G mentioned that uh, having three player who are just you know, like 
same as good as any other player because that's, that's where it is. You know, it's not like uh, fucking Gordon or Shelly uh, came into very team and played for them. Like that, there's people that were not smart, they are just people they forgot to add. But uh, the ruling that native competition have on this, which is that if you have people who shouldn't play for you, that they play for you, um, any rune where they're played in uh, should be considered a, a lost rune. Uh, now people are gonna be like, yeah, it's a bit harsh. It is a bit harsh. I agree. Um, but considering you know, like they, these people played a full match, um, having this, you know, like not matters at all in the world final decision. It's it's not that like it bothers me, but I think this is also part of why you know, like the 50, 50, 50 is frustrated because like literally they have so many ways to be like, you know, look at it. These people broke the rule. Uh, maybe the situation was dealt, um, you know, like uh, in a wrong way. It's clear that they shouldn't have never gotten that rune uh, given to them. But at the end of the day, they didn't do really, they didn't do many things wrong. And they are still, at the end of the day, being the regiment punished for that. So sometimes it happens. Uh, I'm not going to be you know, like going left to bed it because I, I understand both of your points. But what concerns me is that we still have competition where, at the end of the day, you, know, like you have a regiment which is punished. And it may not affect uh, their win in, in the world EIC. I don't think it will. But over our regiment, over our situation, it could have happened. And, and we, we still have taken the same decision because I know that you guys think this is the best decision. And, and you would have probably taken the same decision. Would any other regiment be con con concerned? But it's, it's still like it's still like potentially fucking up the, the, the war run of a of our regiment. And, um, and yeah, I just overall, I think that it's um, it, everyone is involved. It's, it, Matters from the referee to the head organizer and to the regimental leader. Um, everyone has to be careful because the situation can happen. It might happen again, and uh, and you have to be careful because if you try to deal with them too quickly or if you don't have a, a perfect rule set that really cover as many things as possible, then you end up having a regiment like a fifty feet, which feel like they are they are being treated unfairly. And also, I don't think they are being treated unfairly. Would I be them? I would totally understand them, and I would probably share that sentiment. That's really all I have to say. Yeah, we, we, we all agree on that, to be honest. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's always shit being on the other side of it. And when it comes to like the organizers, 15th, um, 15th and even the 18E, and even the 17E, for example, we've all been on the, the shit end of the stick at times. Yeah. And the, the problem is, at the end of the day, is obviously it's never happened before in four seasons of the IC, so it never really been accounted for. Um, which also, which then brings you to a grey area because it wasn't in the rules in the first place because it's never happened before. It's like, how do you quantify it? How do you deal with it mm -hmm. at the time and everything else? Um, and like, like I said before, we don't really blame uh, Unicorn, but but the issue that uh, I think one of the big issues really is that obviously before that round happened, the camping rule only needed to be enforced uh, twice, even though like it was a fairly camping, a fairly long drawn out. Uh, 1v1 obviously this happened on the seventh round so like there was five other rounds where, they were, where it was absolutely fine or four other rounds were absolutely fine um and the problem is is the reason why the all chat and everything had to be cancelled after that is because you know all of the calls of referee bias and everything else that happened afterwards so the match from that point just completely devolved uh, devolved um and it's kind of hard to say what it, it's hard to say what it would have been like had that not actually happened and unfortunately we can only deal with the facts and yeah and when it came down to it um we we, we had a meeting uh the admin team of eic it was myself maskman tardet gi midnight was there as well um i think i'm missing anyone else uh aleko from the 16th was also mm. in there and then also all the 55th admins, basically, all the CIOs and whatnot were in there, Blitzkrieg, um, Quinnell, Rale, and all the others. And uh, we had a quite lengthy debate, I think it went on for about, what, 45, maybe 50 minutes uh, before we all had to jump off free IC. Like, it went on for good for a good long while, and I'd say it was pretty, um, Art of Killing was not uh, Aleko, sorry, I'm, I'm forgetting who's the colonel of the 18th. <laughs> um, yeah. 16. 16. <laughs> Oh, oh, you can tell I'm working on like two hours of sleep today. <laughs> but oh, um, yeah. yeah, but um, yeah. When it when it comes down to it, uh, we, we had a vote between the admin team after this debate, and uh, it was voted that the decision was going to be kept in the sense of um, the 55th have the option to either keep the uh, keep the draw or replay because uh, it's not. Uh, we feel like it's the fairest from this point on, and also 
uh, it's fair to the two LR who comes in as well. Now, I understand from the viewpoint of the 55th, it does seem shitty, and I apologise if it feels that way, but this is the choice that has been decided upon by the whole admin team. Um, if I can yeah. if I can add something to that, like that, what I wanted to say, because like this entire situation was basically still being perspective from the side of that in case the A team would have stayed in the tournament, yeah, which they are not. A yeah. team have been removed. Let's say the A team would have again been warned, more, more players would have been banned as were already banned the previous match week. Let's say we went along that road, then you can say like, all right, it's the more most fairest thing to do considering the fact a team had banned players a team did not apply the, the problem rules. is uh, you know, the boy is the match the from that point devolved you have into to, a like, complete shit show and should have just been cancelled like, uh, that's not the, the, the new, fault of the 55th uh, but, but had that not happened uh, the a team actually might still be in the tournament you know, they have it the, the wrong way, but yeah, it let's shouldn't say have you, gotten to uh, that point, to be We honest. had two regiments still that uh, were potentially to join in. And let's say uh, you I know some people don't understand them, that, hey, but... you can join the tournament. They'll be like, oh, sweet, nice. A spot open up? Yeah, a spot open up. Uh, but you will instantly have a lot. Uh, you will have a win against the 43, uh, but you will have a loss against the 55th already. So that already puts them in a situation where they're like, all right, so we lost against 55th, won against 45 feet, you know. It, it puts them in a difficult situation already in that group stage. Of course, three teams, uh, three it's regiments quiet, are going to advance from this group stage but you know it puts them in a if very Peter difficult Tyler spot quiet, to like get in the top three especially because they already lost against a regiment such as the 55th and they still have other strong regiments still to fight in that group uh including uh us as the 92nd we're in the same well, group uh and so the 55th they already lost to that and there, there, there's still plenty of other regiments that could potentially still beat them which only would ma made them at that point a filler regiment for the group stage just so that everyone could still play matches but didn't actually offer uh, them any chance of advancing in the first place you know like it, let's say it would have been a different situation let's say like Tardis regiment or the 92nd it was we were late to the tournament we didn't sign up and we got the message hey a spot opened up you guys can enter the tournament uh, but you will have a win but also have a loss against the 55th but considering the fact that you guys are so good you can probably still advance through the group stage by winning all of the matches completely li a different situation other than the two alive, you know, two alive had suffered uh, pretty much all of their competitive players when Dark Templar and such reformed the 71st, and they're now signing up to the IEC uh, or the European Infantry Cup. I was quite surprised to be honest because you never really see them on the competitive scenery, but it's only you know fair thing to do for them to sign up and enjoy still the tournament from a fair you know from a fair perspective that they actually still could potentially advance through the stages because now they have to replay 45e and 55th both really tough matches and then still continue but it would at least be you know a fair start from the beginning and that's why i voted for the replaying uh, of the 55th match you know and and, and despite me voting uh for for the um 15 to keep a uh, 55 to keep uh, the win uh, i think it's only totally fair to say that uh the two are in to play not him to win the world tournament uh if i don't think they I'm not sure they, they might be like super happy to make to to make it to the knockout stage, but uh, they know that they don't really stand a, a, a huge chance to make it really that far. Um, so I think they are just in to play, and, and also the 55th might be uh, really frustrated now. Um, I think that after they play with Trelle and they realize that they might actually bet, get even a better scoreline than against the uh, 18th, you know, it's a possibility. Yeah. I mean, no disrespect to Trelle, but I think you made it really clear that they are not the same uh, regi uh, regiment that they used to be. After the seventh was formed, and uh, and and now there is some uh, understandable frustration from the from 55th. Uh, I'm not going to try to pitch in fact, they have a right to be frustrated, uh, but uh, it, yeah, I think well, honestly, everything will solve it itself in a few weeks uh, when the 55th beat the Trilla like we should do, uh, and when they actually advance uh, to the playoff like we should do. Yeah, um, you know, like you're not always, and in the end, it's just one match. You know, we all had that. As a regiment, we always had like I've even I fucking faced the 18th, uh, like I believe two days prior to the IEC match of the 55th versus the 18th. So I was already like, oh man, this is gonna be good because the, in the friendly 1v1 we did, they did the same fucking thing. Run to the edge of the map, the refuse to fight, and then literally we, I, I literally typed an admin like, yeah. listen, th this is a friendly fucking 1v1. You either start fighting us or you, you know, just fuck off. You know, like we're not gonna, we're not in a European Infantry Cup match now. Uh, we're not gonna do this shit, right? And then they start fighting properly again. So I was, yeah, you know, I, it was kind of to be expected that they would 
behave in such a manner as well against the 50 50, mm. considering that it then was an official match. They, they, they compete a lot against the uh, 45 years old, uh, like pretty much you know, like the Wolf are when they were just sitting in, in Sir Cream's 45, you just literally ran into them because they couldn't be house waiting. Uh, but yeah, now it just was meant to happen. Um, I'm sad for them because I'm as happy to look forward to new regiment in the scene. I, I fucking took ages fixing the roster for them because they wouldn't know how to do it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. I told you not to do it. <laughs> I know, you told me, you told me you were right once again, you know, like, but, um, but it's, it's what it is. And, you know, like, maybe we'll be able to see them in the competition. And if they, they actually sign up, uh, we might need to have a talk with them and be like, you know, like, look at what happened last time. Uh, now, you know, like, we can take the time to explain new things, but if you don't want to take the time to actually understand them and, and, and apply them to your regiment, then there's really no point in, like, signing up to, to a competition. Results don't matter. You can be the shittiest of regiment and, and, and play, you know, like, uh, all the competition and, and still be, you know, like, one of the most enjoyable opponent to have because you actually follow the rules. But if you want to be, like, part of a, of a tournament, you have to follow the rules. And they apply to everyone the same. If you don't want to be a bad regiment, you will never make it far. And you will actually not even be uh, allowed to be to stay in the, in the tournament until the end, which is basically what happened. Pretty much. And it plays into the strengths of the CR now, because now Dusk can get all the 18th players on his roster. Yeah, he's already uh, tried. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. It. <laughs> I mean, I'd rather prefer that than seeing them you know, like just turn out for, for the rest of the tournament, because like they, they are leader where I'm capable to actually, you know, like, uh, uh, for the world, so yeah, sure, yeah. fine by me. Definitely. Single player in there for the action, just a couple, right? No, no, for sure, it shouldn't be that way. Exactly, but um, yeah, no, well, I think we'll we'll just leave it at that for now. Then, like I said, the decision was came to now be between the admins. I think uh, we're at that point now where that decision is final. You know, we've we've reviewed it twice that decision, and uh, I, I think upon the, the second review, I think it's just gonna stay there. Enough is enough. Yeah, enough is enough. That that that's it now. And I apologise to Vigil if that's not the answer you were looking for. But um, we 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 run a democracy amongst the admin team, and not everyone does have the same views. Because like Tardet said, he he voted for the other. He voted the other way. Um, not everyone has the same views, but the this yeah, but it's a it's a team decision, and and we all stand behind it. And yeah. despite how how much I might disagree with it. Uh, I, I fully understand why, you know, like, the rest of the admin team came my way, and I just, like, I, I, I had a message to, uh, to, to, you know, like, Blitzkrieg, and I tried to explain him that, you know, like, again, I understand the frustration, but it's just what it is, and, and I'm pretty sure that, you know, like, best, best way is to just, you know, like, forget about it, the decision is done, you know, like, just move on, uh, get the regiment back together, and well, you might be now. might be frustrated, but Could you be. will manage to get them motivated again if you are a good leader, and I'm sure, the 55th uh, are best good leader that they can do is. And yeah, just move on, get back into the swing of, of competitive uh, um, line metal and, and kick some ass, pretty much. Yeah, well, there's not really much else to say other than that, to be honest. No, no, of course not. And two is not a team, so only for the better. Yeah, you, yep. I'm sure you'll actually enjoy that match. <laughs> yeah, uh, two exactly. are always pretty reasonable to play against, and they're a good bunch of lads, to be honest, so... Uh, yeah, no, I suppose we'll leave it at that. But um, yeah. what we'll do now is we've been on Bandwatch for a good long while. <laughs> Fucking stupid name. Uh, someone's making me some graphics for that, by the way. Uh, mm. Sent me over an example of... Uh, like this, if the stream... Uh, yep. Yeah, like this. Uh, someone sent, sent me a uh, GIF, a little edit they did, of a, a drawing of Napoleon's hat which says ban watch is just on fire and I was like this is way too good for this it was like this is it's not it's not scuffed enough for this stream yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, simply by the fact that the stream blacked out at the beginning of yeah, this yeah exactly uh... it took us like <laughs> exactly. 20 minutes to get it going <laughs> yeah it needs to be low quality mate come on <laughs> but what we'll do now is we'll move on to the announcement that we were going to make today anyway uh, we'll, move, we'll move from a negative point to a positive what I, or what I, uh, I think and I hope everyone will appreciate it as a net positive and that Definitely is the announcement well. of a new tournament circuit that um, the three of us are going to be at the helm of I think it's uh, the brainchild of me and just like how EIC was formed 
Peter was having the same idea <laughs> at the Great time. Great think alike. <laughs> when we made uh, when we actually made EIC, um, there was no NWL going on, and like as the H and E, we were just bored of shit, and we wanted a tournament to play. So I messaged Peter. I was like, "Do you want to host a tournament?" He was like, "Oh, I was going to do that." So yeah. there you go. Now we're here, for, like four seasons later. But I uh, know. So the tournament that's going to be hosting is called uh, that we're going to be hosting is well. We don't have, I don't have a flushed out name for it yet. At the moment, we just have a placeholder name, which is EICS, which is the European Infantry Challenger Series. Now, this is a group fighting tournament. This is a group fighting team group fighting tournament, I should say. This yeah. is not a regimental tournament, and it is a 6v6 format. Now, the interesting things to think about are, well, the in interesting points to come out with uh, are that it's going to be two divisions. Uh, division 1 and Division 2 we're not making it 7v7 that's a terrible form <laughs> it's going to be a terrible format for this type of tournament so we're not doing that yeah. and we want more teams and more people to, to take part in those so we're not going to do it that way yeah. but um, yeah so it's going to be two divisions an upper and a lower and we may just call them Divisions 1 and 2 to be honest um, it's rolls off the tongue um, and there will be f four relegation and promotion between the two now what that means is depending on where you seed and where you place in the league um, at the midpoint of the season um, determines where you are so everything so every match you play has meaning and every match basically participates um, every oh, what's, what was I gonna say um, oh, my, oh, this is my there I've forgotten how to speak English today guys honestly words. Um, I've never learned how to, so you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm afraid. I'm, people think that I know how to speak English, but the reality is I don't know. I have no idea. I'm just like, I'm I only just write speaking, paragraphs. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> the, the, like, give me a fucking keyboard and in 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 the screen, and I can you know, like make magic. But when it comes to actually speaking, it, it's 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 been a wall. The, fun, no, the funny but thing I think... is, I have notes as well, and I still fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm just gonna point out. I know what you guys are looking at on the screen at the moment is extremely colourful, and it is very ugly. But uh, we'll, we'll 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 get to that. <laughs> okay. So it's very much a placeholder. Yeah, exactly. It's a very much a placeholder. It's just I put it together on paint in like 15 minutes just to sort of uh, help explain the way that it's going to be working. So, like I said, it's a six versus six. You will be allowed two substitutes as well. Uh, the number of teams will be decided once the uh, sign-ups have been completed, obviously. Um, it, we, like, if we get 24, why on a black, why on a black, it's not a black font, it's blue, you idiot. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm actually screening Enter's command, because it's just... <laughs> and NW people turning out to be colorblind, so shocking. <laughs> we, we, we actually may, may have just lost a ten year old when as soon as you know, like Chrissy put the fucking stream on. <laughs> yeah, so uh, there will be uh, uh, well, we, we we're aiming for about a thousand euros in prize pool. Uh, that that's the that's the benchmark I've hit, and I'm gonna hopefully get that higher for the the second and well the second season onwards. The reason why um, I'm not optimistic about quite hitting that mark just yet. It's because, you know, we need metrics. And what I mean by that is we need to know how many people are actually going to watch it um, so that we can market it, out, market it out to sponsors and other things like that that are going to come mm. in and uh, provide some of that prize pool. Exactly. So the, um, yeah, so the thing is, so what the way it's going to work is the top four teams from Division 2 at the end of uh, the Season 4 of that division as such, there'll be two groups for each division, uh, the top four teams from each group will advance up to a relegation bracket. And uh, what that essentially means is the top, well, the bottom four teams from Division 1, uh, you know, if they haven't performed well enough, they'll go down to that relegation bracket. And then those 16 teams uh, will essentially fight it out to see who's going to go pro get promoted up to Division 1 or who's going to get relegated back down to Division 2. Now there are a couple of reasons why this is quite good. It means that all the teams that are in Division One are um, uh, essentially supposed to be the best of the best, and you're going to be rewarded for your performance. You're not just going to be rewarded because you have a cool roster. 
Or you have cool names on the roster. Like, I put X Daz on my roster and he never fucking plays, and that just puts me at the, the top of Division 1 for whatever reason. That's, exactly. that's not the way it will work at all. The, 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 the teams will have to actually play for their seeding. Yeah. And this is a this is great for a number of reasons that I've already gone over. But another one is that we can have actual player and team rankings based on the performances of teams and players within the circuit rather than just going around random group fighting matches and random group fighting tournaments who all have a different um, who, which all have a different format, right? Some of them will be 5v5, some of them will be 3v3, some of them will be 7v7. It'll be a yeah, uniform true. format and yeah, I think 6v6 after we had a discussion on TeamSpeak between the three of us, but we all agreed that's probably um, the best format for this. And there's like there's plenty of arguments that can be made for like nah put it down to five v five nah put it down to seven v seven. Ultimately, like the decision was made to make it a six v six, primarily because five v five could uh, you know uh, get a very pa uh, passive playstyle. For example, you have two on each flank and one in the center, and sometimes people in the center would just be like watching each other do uh, feints and stuff like that and not actually engage. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, to be said, and we feel like with the six v six. That is like the most balanced approach to this, whereas you can field the most teams and basically also have the most action on the field. It's it's the best compromise, really. Like uh, I I know, for example, like um, I was talking to Tibias the other night, and he told me how much he personally, you know, like as a top player, uh, always loves seven v seven, and and I can honestly I can honestly understand that because it's just it's such a like cool format, but. Uh, it wasn't like we had to find a middle room between 5v5, which, as Peter said, is, is a really long curve. It, it's super tactical and there's a lot of skill involved, but it can like get really stale really quickly. And um, what we want to do with this is just like we're not gonna make like individual sport by just being like, you know, like it's just something doesn't work that way, but we want to make sure that if we have a, a sample to show to uh, um, any company that could actually you know, like uh, you know, uh, sponsor us. Uh, it's an actual good sample to look at. So, like, NW is already, like, so particular to explain to people. Like, I don't know if you ever, like, got friends coming, like, at home or sharing them, like, uh, well, what you guys do at night, or, like, what you do on a fucking Sunday evening. Uh, it's it's really hard to explain because, like, you can, uh, I've shown, like, friends like uh, CSGO, you know, like, Aston. It all makes sense because they can relate to some extent to it. They have seen, like, some other example. But NW, there's no, it, it's, it's so unique, it's so particular. And if we want to show something like the best of the, of the community uh, uh, to any anybody really that could be interested in it. Um, 5v5 uh, my, is, is really too small and 7 7 7 to 7 might start being a bit too big. Could be doable, but 6 versus 6 uh, is a safe you know, a safety for us. You know, like it's a, it just, we know that it's going to work with 7 versus 6 versus 6 and we're not, we're not as sure with 7 versus 7. So at the end of the day, we have to make a decision. And uh, one, one thing what Chris says is really important is that um, I love the diversity in, in W uh, tournaments. I think it's a great thing. Um, but if you look at all the really like competitive top game, uh, they have a format which is basically you know, the same tournament after tournament. Standard native, yeah. yeah, exactly. Native had a big argument with that because when we switched to 5v5 and 6v6, they tried some format. But at the end of the day, AG8 always stay you know, like the the big brain format, and that's because that's the one people are the most familiar on. I think if you look at it from like since the beginning of a native scene, they uh, native scene, um, they had maybe like I don't know, uh, eighty or ninety percent of the tournament being uh, uh, AV8, and only like a, a small ten to fifteen percent being like over format, such as uh, five v five, six v six, or over tournament, which are way more chill. Um, but they they really um, they really like make made it you know like. Uh, uh, interesting by you know, like keeping the same format, so but it was not so much you know, like learning to play with uh, the format and changing team and changing stuff. It was more about you know, like okay, it's eighty-eight, so we have uh, this setup, and now you're gonna learn the calls, the maps, um, uh, you know, like how to synergize your team together, how to you know, like get your calves to play with your archer with your infantry. Um, obviously, NW is not as complex, but you can make some similarity with it, and uh, and and yeah, it's just like. To, to try because and uh, understand that we don't really know where we are going. I mean, we know where we are going, but we are not you know, like 100% uh, sure it will work. But if we want to yeah. give it a chance, um, it has to be the same format for pretty much all the normal blasting. Because uh, if yeah. we switch to 7 versus 7 next season or 5v5, then it's all 
over the table again. It's, it's just it doesn't matter anymore. Oh. So yeah, it's just I understand some people will be um, disappointed by it's not the, their most uh, favorite format, but but do understand that we we've been thinking for this and we might we might not be top player of our own, uh, but we know the good fighting scene enough. Uh, to know that it's really for the best of the tournament and the best of what we're trying to create, which is a, a healthy, really top end of the competitive scene. And just not like everything we have right now, which is really good, but but really doesn't know how to use the best resources it gets. And you have to think about it as well. If this all, like, let's say everything works out in the best possible situation, the best scenarios happen. Let's say we get, like, a really big viewership. Let's say we uh, the prize pool at the first season is pretty good, but let's say we get those statistics that we can then go to companies and say like, hey, listen, your brand could like be part of this uh, competitive sport that we or like this competitive NW that we're doing, um, which would probably get them views, which would probably get them some sort of clout, you know, those type of companies. This could eventually lead into the fact that for the first time since ever, fucking NW turns into uh, a fucking uh, esport. Which would have been just fucking mind blown, considering the fact that over the how many years we've been talking about it, people saying, "Oh, the game is dead. The game is dead. You know, the game is dead." Now, like we are now really at what I would say at such a spot where so many players have such a high skill level that you will really see the difference between what is the highest amount of skill level that some people can achieve. And some people will say, "Oh, that was probably during the French touch time." But I, I still believe there's a lot more now. Uh, you know, like bigger playing field with a uh, larger player pool with people that's going easily top that or equal that you know i'm sorry but it's really like you have to give them uh, first a, a competitive environment which is healthy uh, uh organized and uh, and entertaining you know like uh healthy because like you always play the same format you you, you know the team you're gonna face and, and you can really you know, practice to actually beat them you just not practice to be the best version of yourself but actually practice against team that uh, you know you're gonna play against uh, um uh, organized because you know, like it has to be you know, like uh an actual production team and just looking like people from the community that are also playing in tournament you know, like so, but Native actually was always better than NW in a purely strictly competitive aspect because they had actually people taking that time to host a free four month tournament and, and coming to this and not playing it. And and I think people underestimate how important it is that you have people who are willing to do that and they won't play. Um uh, I'm I'm not a great player but I could actually uh, continue playing for a decent team if I wanted to. But I know that my uh, my skill set is more useful in the other aspect. And if I want to uh, keep the community, keep the NW competitive community growing and actually improve it, uh, I'm going to be more useful somewhere else. Some player, I, I, I'm actually going to tell them, no, that's your chance, go play in it. Some other player, I'm going to tell them, you know, like, no, this is your chance to be doing something useful. Uh, you know, you're not going to really make it to the top of the scene. You know, it is. it's not really like, you know, like you tried, it didn't really work. So. You have other skill sets which are looking forward to and will need you in the production team. And if everyone understands that it's it's a it's a give and take process and you cannot have everyone playing, you also need to have you know like um just um you know like you need to have a player that actually uh, somehow understand that um yeah it's just you know, like it's it's really um yeah pretty much you know, like uh, it's um it's it's part of you know like how how NW works, you know, like you have player who play and the other will actually help. And we need to have you know, like the best compromise of this pretty much. Pretty much. Let us be the promoters basically, in a certain way. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Let us handle it and we'll give you um probably the best tournament form format than, that you've ever had in NW in terms of group at least in terms of group fighting. And also um That's cool. Yeah, you're getting a prize pool. <laughs> and, and and I'll go into a little bit more detail about what that actually means in a second. Um, but yeah, uh, you're going to get a consistent tournament. Um, and another nice thing is for newer teams, newer players that are coming in that don't really understand um, what the progression is and everything else, there's clear progression here. You come in at that Division 2, you come in at the start, and then based on your performances, based on like how much better you're getting, how much better your teamwork's getting, your individual play's getting, you know, you can see yourself progressing up. Because the higher you go up that board, the better your seeding is for the next, for the next, uh, for the next uh, tournament. Whether that will be a month later or a couple of weeks later, it depends on like, it depends in terms of sponsorship and everything else. How often we can host it. But I think what we're looking at doing at the moment is, uh, we're going to be hosting well. 
uh, I'll be announcing the start date for some point after EIC. Uh, we'll work out when works best for uh, well, the whole community, basically, because obviously there are other group fighting tournaments that will want to happen. There will be other and one v one tournaments and stuff, and there's also the regimental group fighting tournament that needs to be done at some point as well, as we do that every year. But in terms of, uh, I've got another terrible slide for you guys, so just bear with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit better than the last one but this is just an example right this is an example of what like the uh playoff bracket might look like and how the um and how the uh prize pool might be distributed uh, distributed out okay so you know it'll be it'll either be a uh, single elimination or a double elimination most likely double elimination because that is the superior format in my opinion I think there's a lot of people that agree with me on that and there are some that disagree but yeah well We'll work that out when we actually get to that time we're not there just yet but just as an, an example as you can see like the regiments that might come in round one you know uh well that might get knocked out in the first round of the um the playoffs you know they might only get 10 euros per person you know it, it depends on how much we actually get in terms of prize pool because we don't know that yet we can't quantify it until it actually happens um and then let's say the teams that come in the next round or that get knocked out in the next round uh, they might get 15 and then the next team that comes third might get 20 and then the next team might get 30 but this is per person by the way not over the whole team obviously that'd be a silly amount of money that no one would ever give a shit about um so you could potentially walk away with 50 euros per person just for playing just spending a couple of days playing in w like you normally would anyway exactly i i don't i don't see anything but the positives and benefits out of this really <laughs> yeah you're playing pure cancer, but you're getting paid for it. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> so, like, yeah. You have something to say? Uh, if I no, not really. And, and I, I think this is like basically coming down to what could be just the first season. You know, again, you don't know how things are going to progress, but if the first season would be successful, and again, you're going to look to the optimistic side of things, uh, it can only go up from there, really. Exactly. When oh, it yeah. comes to the, or, or, yeah, when it comes to um the second season and everything, when we can bring in sponsors and everything else, um even better. But the way the um crowdfunded prize pool is going to work is I've already set up a PayPal pool basically, and essentially whoever wants to can donate to that, and that's and that's the way it works. Uh, you can do you can donate one euro if you want to. You can donate a thousand euros if you really want to. You know, do it. It's, it's do it. No do it. Do it. No, it's, it's entirely up to, uh, to you guys. Obviously, I'll, I'll be putting in some of my own money as well. Looking um, at you, rich fucks, motherfucker. <laughs> exactly. Any of you rich fuckers, you know, if you've got a sugar daddy around, you know, anything, let, let him know. Let him know. Started, that I'm an open Started wallet. does gay for pay. Started literally does gay for pay, so it's okay. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> He literally said as well that if anybody during this stream now would donate a thousand euros, he would still do the Daddy Shark uh, dance. You still have time. You are running out of time, but you still have time. Yeah, still have time. <laughs> Just really donate a thousand euros and Tyler will do the Daddy uh, Daddy Shark uh, song. No jokes. Yeah, but boy, that's no, what we've done. We've put, uh, mm -hmm. we have put up a um, PayPal pool. I think it's already up actually. Let me have a. Or oh, I I know I did it, but did I put it? Anywhere. Let me just quickly log in, and I'll put the link in now if you guys want it. Just give me a second. And the way, and the nice thing about doing a PayPal pool is pretty much anyone who goes onto the page can see how much is in there. So it gives a little bit of a security for everyone as well. Uh, I just need to do my two FA because of reasons. I'll put it in the chat. Not the two FA, the PayPal link, obviously. Veggie, don't f Veggie, don't forget, but boy is Swiss. He literally has all the money that was, uh, literally all the gold that was lost during World War Two. <laughs> <laughs> Share this pool. Here we are. There you go. There's a link for it in the chat. So, so oh, I set it. I set it up before, the... basically. Um, yeah. Shit. Try this onto you, Chrissy. What? What, what have I done? Chris will do a Tappington. He's on to you. Fuck. Stop it. Stop oh, the recording now. No, Just oh, stop no. it. <laughs> I've been cancelled already. I haven't even done anything yet. <laughs> but yeah. 
like I said, you'll be able to see who contributes to it, how much is contributed to it. So it's not like one of the admins is just going to fucking run away with the money. Well, I suppose technically you could, but um, it'd be a lot harder to get away with, essentially. Exactly. Um, and that's the only real way. Uh, well, yeah, and I think we've kind of covered everything to do, to be honest. So um, if I. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. I wanted to get rid of the fucking stupid colourful pictures that don't make any sense. I think I think we'll need to have uh, at least one more one more of a stream to literally like really only to focus on the uh, on on this thing on this tournament project yeah. and, and and really go deep into the details and probably have a maybe a FAQ with uh, some of the people in the chat just you know, like answer question and yeah. possibly you know, like uh, well it could be with you it could be with me just you know, like something that really can be interactive because we give. You guys a lot of information. You're gonna have a lot of information on the forum probably somewhere in you know, like next month or, or something. Uh, we still have a lot of stuff to discuss, so not everything is set, but yeah, yeah. Overall, uh, just um, as a, as a wise man would say, and I, I'm gonna hate myself for for saying that, but fucking get involved, Chris. Oh, fucking kill yourself. <laughs> oh, I mean, no. what? <laughs> Why would yeah, you do like, that? Yeah, literally, it's stream <laughs> I'm, I'm turning off my camera. You'll you'll get in touch with my lawyer. Nah, <laughs> yeah, no. Nah, all jokes aside, yeah, it's it's in the it basically, yeah, it's still in the uh, in the drawings, as you would say, you know. Uh, it's a good. It was fun to announce this. Um, and then you basically more information and more stuff uh, surrounding the whole tournament thing and stuff like that will you know be given out at some point. Yeah, at the moment it may seem like uh, it may seem like it's just uh, a little bit half-assed in a way. But the the thing is, when when you've got this many ideas floating around in people's heads, it's hard to put it yeah. down on paper until we properly sit down and go over it. Um, and it will require a fully dedicated FSC post just to explaining how it's all going to work. And like Tyler said, it's probably going to need another stream as well, to be honest with you. I, I just want you. I just yeah, it's, but we wanted to announce anyway, just because um, one thing we wanted to talk about on the stream was esports in MW anyway. Because um, I think that was, well, yeah, that was what uh, we're all sort of interested in at the moment and trying to carry forwards. But, um, right, so oh, I just want to add, so the. The Swiss fucker hiding you, all boy. the German gold has already put in two hundred pounds. Well, it, it's it's anonymous, so we can't know. It's, it, oh, it, be, oh yeah, it might not actually yeah, be. It, oh. it says boy number one donator, but you know that could just be a I meme. Could be anyone really. That, so yeah, that could be Yoko, to be, for all we know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, thank you, Yoko. Really yeah, cheers, Yoko. Thanks for the thanks for the donation. <laughs> <laughs> no, but boy, thank, thank thank you for contributing already. Obviously, we're, yeah. I'm going to be matching in as much as I can, whether it'll be, um, uh, well, I'll, I'll decide that later. Fuck you guys. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Expect, we, we wanna... uh, wait, I'll donate 200 quid if Peter Fox started also. Well, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> we've already, uh, we've already established that Tardet's a gay for hire at this point. Yeah, exactly. But I wasn't involved in this deal. But I suppose uh, if there's a lot of money on the line, uh -huh. I'll give yeah. two hundred quid a Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll give it a thinking. Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll <laughs> you know, Berlin, that's one. That's not a no, to be honest. <laughs> two hundred quid if I drink a pint of ale. I'll do that easily, mate. Get me one of your disgusting eels and I'll fucking chuck it down instantly. I mean, I pretty much sell my soul for NW at this point, so, you know, like, I'm already... Yeah. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a lost man, so, you know, like, in for it. Done for done, you know, just like, yeah. Anyway... <laughs> Oh, if anyone uh, anyone wants to put another two hundred in, you know, I will literally drink water. That's that's oh. how dedicated I am to this right now. No, but uh, yeah, we like I said, we wanted to just get this out the door so that everyone knows that it's uh, it's being worked on and that it's going to come within the next uh, couple of well, whether or not it be a couple of weeks to a month uh, when that thread goes up and everything's done. Um, it's yeah, that, that's that's up in the air. You you guys will all find out. We'll, we'll, we'll keep everyone informed. You know, and we're, we're going to be doing this podcast every week anyway um, with with different um, guests every yes. time. So I'm going to, I will bring it up and update everyone on that as well. And um, yeah, no, I don't think we really have anything else to say on it, to be honest. I think we've kind of covered everything. When it comes to the actual tournament itself, um, the way the matches on the day will be played, if any of you have taken part in RGT before, 
the 10v10 regiment of group fighting. It's going to work out kind of similar to that. Uh, essentially, what will happen is uh, each of the groups will play on a different server, you know, to make it easier. So the matches can be played quicker and also less lag, right? So everyone likes it when there's less lag. Um, <laughs> Always. Especially when there's money on the line. People will find fucking anything to complain about. So we're not going to let you complain about the damn lag. Exactly. Um, and then from there, when it comes to either the relegations or the playoffs, you know, uh, the two servers will merge into one, essentially. Now, the only thing I will say is that we do have to be quite um, strict as to how the actual matches and the servers are going to be run. And the reason for this is because, obviously, we need to be directing as many people as we can to the streams and the official content that's going to be surrounding the tournament itself. Because... If we don't do that, we can't bring in sponsors, we can't get you a bigger prize pool, and uh, we can't pay casters and stuff like that when it comes to it. That, that is a, a long-term goal of mine, is to not just pay the people who are playing, but what about the admins that sit in spec for four fucking hours adminning for you and stuff like that? They should, they should, be, allowed to, they should be allowed to get some of, the, some of the money as well. All right, Tavington, here we go. Yeah. Troister was right all along, fuck! Troister was right all along. <laughs> I mean, none of the, none of the money is going to go to me, so, I don't yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't matter if people want to get paid. They want to get paid. If not, it doesn't matter to me because I don't see any of the money. So uh -huh. it's, it's entirely up. It's entirely up to like um how, well how what we can do in terms of the prize pool, how many sponsors we can bring in. I'm already mm. in contact with a couple of uh, a couple of things, a couple of uh, companies. Um, one of them. Uh, well, I don't think I'm actually allowed to say. Uh, I don't think I'm allowed to say, oh. so I'm just not going to. That's probably not a good idea. Um, probably not. Not until something's actually signed. Uh, otherwise, I'll get it in the ass later, I suppose. Um, but yeah, uh, do you guys need, want to add anything else to that? Or do you think we've covered it all, like, fairly, I'd, I'd say fairly briefly for what it needs to be, but we've covered it yeah. at some point, some length. Yeah. There's, think, there's, there's nothing more, really, from my side. Yeah, I think, I think we can just say to little it is, and uh, but there's obviously more coming. But, but you're gonna be like, uh, you're gonna have to subscribe to our Christian channel to make sure that you don't miss the upcoming podcast because you don't know if there could be some nice information in this, or you do, wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to miss it. Uh, also remember that this guy has a YouTube channel uh, where he also upload all his videos later on. So yeah, just uh, give a man some love because uh, as much as a cunt he is, he's putting a lot of time into uh, into the development and uh, we need more people like him. Too much I, I hate time. I hate to say it. I absolutely hate to say it, but we need more people like him, so yeah. Who? Not you. Uh, <laughs> fuck no. Uh, fuck no. You don't need more cunts like me. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think that's one, but yeah. Yeah, no. Everything will be... Uh, uh, well, you'll all be kept up to date as we know more. And uh, I'm going to be sending a lot of messages out, networking with a lot of uh, people, whether or not it be, like I said, companies. I'm even going to be speaking to people that may not even play NW that much anymore. Just because some of the reasons why people don't play NW much anymore is because it's stale. It's been the same for years. The only difference is, is we might add one or two more people to the format, making it 7v7 instead of 6v6 or something like that. It's not really a shake-up. It doesn't really... There was no endgame. Really yeah, exactly. There was no endgame. Thank you. That's it. There was yeah. no Avengers endgame at the end of this yeah. road. You know what I mean? There, and there right, right now, not only do we have an endgame, we have progression. And let's no, say... No, we... We we are we, we are tennis. We are inevitable. And uh yeah, this is this is us, we are coming for you. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah, but the way you said yeah. Thanos killed Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh Thanos, oh we are Thanos, Thanos, we are inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you, just, you just had really the little, like, the little heart in, in the baguette and then yeah, you're very <laughs> No, I've just got like a, I've got an image of like you know fucking Thanos's head with those stupid lines on his chin just baguettes instead of the fucking like chin. <laughs> Why am I like this? Uh, Why does this exist? Yeah. I would like the last thing I would like to add to for my side then uh, is that like you know it's a great thing that we can do as a community as a whole. Uh, you know like uh, see how far we can get this because uh, everyone gets to play a role in this. Uh, there's obviously people like us who's trying to push it towards companies and try to stream and record type of stuff. But in the end, it also relies heavily Thanks, on guys. how players play, you know. Like, if there wasn't so much excitement surrounding these type of tournaments that we are getting as uh, viewers and players of the game themselves, then there would be no point whatsoever.
to host anything like this. So, you know, it's, it's just nice that we can do this as, you know, as a combined front, as much as there is regimental tensions or just group fighting tensions, you know, like it's just a combined effort. Yeah, the next... Uh... Oh, or you tell it? It's not, I say, I say, it really is, it really is a oh. combined effort. Yeah, no, and um, I think the, the next uh, sort of hurdle to go over with this is uh, just making sure all the group fighting teams are on board, but I don't think we're really going to have a problem with that. So, you want to get paid, bitch? Yeah, get, if you want to get paid, <laughs> come join the damn tournament. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good jokes. Uh, you're, so, you're, play, you're, you're, playing, you're still playing the city game anyway, so you might as well just join in and get paid for it, really. Exactly. Yeah, you're gonna exactly. you're gonna play the tournaments regardless. Someone else will host a fucking six v six or a seven v seven. You're playing Mighty, that. Mighty Pain. Mighty, Mighty Pain. Pain. Where you at? Mighty Pain. <laughs> 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 Come on. Coco will hey, make we teams. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we we, we pretty much covered uh, everything. Uh, yeah, I think it's the... it's time to call it today because it's fucking like it's been like one hour and a half long and yeah. I think. Surprisingly enough, people might get bored of us, uh, which can happen sometimes. So you literally get to see Tardis's face. How can you get boring? Of course, it's in in like one four one forty four p. Of course, but you know, it's 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 worth it. It's imagine worth it. imagine how many viewers we would get if I actually get a fucking uh, nice camera. We never know. This yeah. team could really kick off. Tardis, right? As a part of this tournament, yeah. If you agree to cast some matches, I will buy you a camera. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I, we will get. Right, but boy, have you got another 200 euros around for a camera? You don't! You, literally, the shitty thing that I'm using is for 20 euros yeah, on fucking, like, that's it, 20 euros. We don't need 200 euros, we don't need to see Tardot's face in 4K Ultra HD. <laughs> <laughs> and anything above, like, from 360p onwards is already a fucking win. I have nothing more to say. It's just. Let's end it. At this point, we're just going to be rambling I'm for another shame. half an hour. Yeah. I'm yeah. And uh, yeah, that will be the, the end of uh, the end of this. Yeah. Oh, right. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining into the stream and sticking around. Um, obviously, it's been a, it's been quite a long day. It's been stressful for many people for a few different reasons. And then obviously we had the issues at the start of the stream. But I appreciate that um, quite a lot of people stuck around after the stream went live again. I think we had 90 people watching. Um, now mm. we've gone down to 60. Um, you know, but we've, we've been talking for... We've been online for like two hours now. So it's kind of expected, to be honest. The, f the fact that you fucking listen at us at all. Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, why? <laughs> why Go do so something. No, it's jokes. <laughs> exactly go do something productive what's, yeah, what's the fun. matter with you guys <laughs> anyways what we'll, what we'll do guys is um, I'll uh, yeah well we'll sign off from here I'll play some music we'll put the stream on end and that'll be it um, just keep an eye on FSC for updates for the tournament and also updates for EIC and everything else and uh, I well hopefully once I eventually fix this stupid PC we'll do more than just one stream a week um, but we'll get there eventually. We're just not there at that point. So um, Tardis is literally waiting there for an hour. Like, come on, yeah, man. I know. He's like, can you just fucking stop? Give it to me! Give it to me! I watch tomorrow, man. I'm gonna be so fucked up. Anyway, <laughs> have, a, have a lovely evening, guys. Thanks a lot for everyone for tuning in. And yeah, uh, see you guys next week. Not with us, but with these guys still. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Catch you later, everyone. Bye bye.